Hello mathematical friends! Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to show you one of my favorite ways of constructing primitive Pythagorean triples uh, using stereographic projection. So let's get started with it. I really like this construction because I think the first one I ever saw of constructing Pythagorean triples was using a number theory algebraic approach, which is fine and all, but um, I like this thing better because it's inherently geometric and it makes sense that a geometric object would have a geometric construction. So uh, let's go ahead and first get some motivation for this. So a Pythagorean triple is when you have three natural numbers, a, b, and c, so that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, now the first step in this construction is that I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation here by c squared, which gives me a over c squared plus b over c squared equals one. And this is really nice because this um, indicates that we can find all of our Pythagorean triples as rational points on a circle. Uh, we have to look for those rational numbers. Now that doesn't really sound much better, finding rational points on a circle is not necessarily easy. So where do we start? I'm glad you asked. We use the stereographic projection. So what is the stereographic projection? Well, let's look at my circle here in the plane. Here's my x-axis and my y-axis. And my circle here. The stereographic projection is a uh, map that sends every point on my circle, except for one, to the real line. And so I am just basically unwrapping the circle after I remove a point from it. And so the way that you do this is that you pick one point on your circle to be the projection point. So here I'll pick that to be the point 0, 1. And I'm going to draw a straight line through it that touches the x-axis. So that'll hit the circle right here. And it'll land here on the x-axis. Let's say that's the point r zero, R for real. Let's see, let's move this thing a little bit closer so that you can see better. Okay, that's a little better. And as it turns out, now there's no guarantee at first that this thing was gonna hit a rational number, but let's say, let's pretend that it does. You know, we hit some number P, Q, where P and Q are rational numbers. Well, if you think about it, you would have to go, since zero and one are rational numbers, we'd have to go down one, down a rational amount, and over a rational amount. And so um, we have some sort of rational slope going on. And so it very much seems to be the case that if we um, hit a rational number here, we'll hit a rational number on the real axis. And so if there's some sort of inverse function, if you plug in some rational number here, like if you land at some rational number, you must have had one to begin with. And so this is an example of a birational function. You plug in an irrational number, out comes a rational number. And if you have a rational output, it must have been the case that you plugged in a rational number in the first place. And so this is great. This uh, allows us to find all of the primitive Pythagorean triples. We just need to figure out what the equation of this line is, and then use that to calculate what the points P and Q must be on the circle. So um, let's see here. Well, this is just a line, and so we just have the ingredients for a line. Every line is given by the equation y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. Well, clearly, the y-intercept is 1, so we can set b equal to 1. So y is equal to mx plus 1. And as for the slope, well, we don't know where it hits over here, but we do know that we hit over here on the line. And so we have to go down 1 and over r, and slope is just the change in y divided by the change in x. So since we go down 1 over r, the slope m must be negative 1 over r. And so now we have the equation y equals negative 1 over r times x plus 1. And so now all we have to do then is use this information to figure out where it hits the circle. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase my circle picture here for a moment. So 
And now we have a new goal. Our new goal is to find P and Q given R, given the point where it hits the real axis. Given the, not real axis, the, real, the uh, x axis. Well, we do know that since we're on a circle, squaring the x coordinate and squaring the y coordinate should give us 1. So whatever the x and y coordinates are that gives us P and Q, we know at the very least it has to be satisfying x squared plus y squared equals 1. And having two variables to work with is kind of nasty. So if I can just have one to work with, that'd be a whole lot better. And we're in luck because since we have this equation over here, we can write uh, y in terms of x. So we can rewrite this as x squared plus negative 1 over r x plus 1 squared equals 1. And now we just go ahead and do some algebra here. So this becomes x squared uh, plus 1 over r squared x minus 2 over r x plus, oh that's supposed to be x squared, uh, plus 1 equals 1. We have positive ones on both sides so these can cancel. And combining like terms we now have uh, 1 plus 1 over r squared x squared minus 2 over r x equals 0. And now from here, the name of the game is just solving for x. And uh, you can check this for yourself that when we go ahead and finish this calculation, we get that x must equal 2r over r squared plus 1. And since we uh, have a formula for y in terms of x, when we plug this value in for x over here, we get that y has to be equal to uh, r squared minus 1 over r squared plus 1. And since these are where it's a circle, this is going to be our p, and this is our q. Great, so now that we have these, let's go ahead and try an example to see how we can get some uh, Pythagorean triples out of this. So we have that um, one's got to be 2r over r squared plus 1. Q is equal to r squared minus 1 over r squared plus 1. Since it's a birational function, all we have to do is plug a rational number into here, and we'll get the um, numbers for the Pythagorean triple that we desire. So let's try the number 1, for instance. Our favorite rational number. I guess we could try 0, 2, but that's kind of boring. So we'll do r equals 1. When we do that, that gives us that p is equal to sorry, I just had to go check them outside. That gives us 2 over 2 and q is equal to 0 over 2, and so I guess we do have a silly example here of 0 squared plus 2 squared does in fact equal 2 squared, so let's try something a bit more interesting then. Let's try the number 2. Let's say that r equals 2. When we do that, we get that p is going to equal 2 times 2, which is 4, over 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1, which is 5, and q is going to equal 3 over 5. And so this gives us the 4 fifths squared plus 3 fifths squared equals 1. Or as you might have seen before, if you're familiar with Pythagorean triples at all, this is the same thing as saying 4 squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. And for the heck of it, let's just go ahead and do one more. Let's now try r is equal to 3. And of course, you can plug in fractions too. Um, 
I just feel less comfortable doing that on the spot. This is entirely improvised. <laughs> um, natural number is always great to work with. So we do that, we get that p is going to equal 2 times 3, which is 6. And then r squared plus 1, that's uh, 3 squared plus 1, that's 10. And then q is going to equal, let's see, that would be 8 over 10. And that gives us 6 squared plus 8 squared over 10 squared which you might notice is a multiple of our other ones. So we don't only just, so we not only get the primitive Pythagorean triples, we also get multiples of the other ones because this is going to be, you know, three times two, this is four times two, five times two. So we get multiples of the other Pythagorean triples. So I hope you found this enjoyable and that you uh, try this on your own. And uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you have a friend you think will like this, go ahead and share it with them.